Hi guys! Um, okay, so um, for today's lesson um, I want to look particularly at, um, at how to go from the prompt to the story, I guess is what you would say. Um, I know we've been through this before but I want to just kind of go through it with a little bit more depth um, and I want to talk um, particularly about um, how to incorporate the prompt, making sure that the prompt is at the center of your piece because ultimately that is kind of the task, is to um, show your understanding of the prompt and what the prompt shows you about the text. Okay, so a little bit of a word to the wise, make sure your prompt is like super, super clear. Okay, all right, so let's have a look at something. I'm just going to zoom myself out. Ready? Oh, there I am. Hey. Um, okay, so let's get going, shall we? All right, so the creative task. Like I've said about a thousand times, you will receive two quotes from the crucible. They are your prompts from for the, the task, okay? You need to take one of these quotes and respond creatively to it. That basically means writing something creative like a script, an extra scene, a letter, whatever, um, that either adds a different perspective to the scene that the quote is from or explores the ideas that can be seen in the quote but is from another part in the text. Okay, so you can either write directly in the moment that the quote's from um, but you can't just kind of retell the story. You've got to add something new. You've got to add a new perspective. So, for instance, you might choose um, the scene where, say, Betty wakes up, right? But you can't really tell it um, from the perspective of Betty was asleep and then she wakes up because that's something that we've already seen. Something that we haven't seen is from Betty's perspective. You know, what is Betty seeing in those moments where her eyes are closed? Um, is she um, is she actually conscious but can't move um, and can hear everything going on around her? Or um, is she actually in a really deep hallucination um, or kind of like lucid dream? And what is that dream? What is she dreaming about? Um, so you could you could do that. That would be really cool. But you couldn't just kind of tell the story about her waking up from, say, like Mercy Lewis's perspective because essentially it tells us the same thing as what we saw in the actual scene. So you've got to be able to add something new. The other thing that you can do with a quote, uh, with the quote is to kind of go, okay, so this quote is all about mob mentality. And, yes, I can see mob mentality in the quote um, where um, – you know, they're, they're all kind of going, um, you know, maybe maybe it's a quote that's from um, from Mary, um, from Mary Warren, and Mary Warren is kind of going, uh, going against Abigail, you know, that scene where she goes against Abigail, and then all the girls kind of turn against her um, and pretend like she's this bird that's going to come and pick out, pick out their eyes. Um, you, you couldn't tell that story from like say you know like in a script format um, because we already know it as as a script format and it's not going to add anything new um, but um, you could go okay well this is about mob mentality uh, and I don't really want to talk about mob mentality in terms of the girls but I do want to talk about mob mentality perhaps in terms of the way um, in Andover you know how in Andover, like the um, the people rise up against um, the authorities that are condemning everyone to being witches, and they actually um, they they get everyone free. Um, so maybe you want to look at mob mentality from that perspective and write a script that looks at what happened in Andover. That would be really cool. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense in terms of like what you can do with a quote. Let's have a look at the next thing. Okay, so I've got an example here. Hang on, oh, my my head's in the way. Let me just see if I can 
move myself to a point where I'm less annoying. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. So, <laughs> um, okay, so your example quote is this. This is the one that um, was chosen. Shall the worms declare his truth? Go to him. Take his shame away. And that's hail. Okay. Um, so with this, um, I need to think about when it was. Okay, so when it was um, is right at the end. It's like, I want to say the last page. If it's not the last page, it's this, at the bottom of the second last page. Um, and um, he's talking to um, Elizabeth and saying, you know, Elizabeth, you need to go and convince him to um, to say that that um, that he did consort with the devil. Um, you need to go to him and tell him to confess um, because otherwise he's he's going to die. Um, and you know what what's the point he's saying what's the point where he says shall the worms declare his truth he's being sarcastic and he's like so what good is it dying uh, what what good does it do anyone what so that the worms are going to come up out of the ground and say actually john proctor was real you know he, he wasn't a liar after all blah blah it's, he's being sarcastic um and then when he says take his shame away he's saying um you know like that he's he's only going to kill himself because he's ashamed of who he is, uh, which is actually incorrect, isn't it? Um, actually, um, going to die is the thing that takes his shame away, um, his shame of the kind of person that he feels like he was. Um, he now feels like he, he isn't ashamed of who he is. So that, I guess, is... is is one of the reasons why this is quite a good quote because it shows us a couple of things. One, that Hale doesn't really understand Proctor and why Proctor's doing the things that he's doing. Um, and um, the other thing that it, it shows us is, is Hale clutching at straws to try and, um, I guess, take his own shame away. Um, the shame that he knows that he's gonna have to carry um, because of all the blood on his hands, and one of those people, uh, one of those people's blood is is Proctor's, um, and he has to live with that. And so he's kind of willing to do, say anything, do anything to alleviate his own guilt. So these were the ideas that I came up with. Okay, um, rather than write in that moment, I'm going to write after that moment, um, like after the text. Um, so I was going to write a letter as Hale, so Hale's the one that writes the letter, to Goody Proctor after the execution of John Proctor. This letter is going to detail the reasons why he tried to get Proctor to confess um, and why he tried to use her to do it because he really is trying to use her. Um, you know, he's not doing this like it's. it would be really nice to think and I think... Um, Proctor would like, eh, sorry, Hale in the moment would like to think that he's doing it out of like altru altruism um, or like some kind of kindness towards John, but he's really not. Like deep down we know he's not. We know that this is about him trying to alleviate his, the, his own sins. Um, anyway, um, he now going back to my idea, he now believes that what John w did was right and he now wants to apologise to her and, and to John's family because remember he has kids. Um, so yeah, that that was kind of like my first idea because it then kind of like really explores this idea of how he thinks, you know, he says, takes his shame away, but actually he's talking about actually the real person whose shame needs taking away is, is Hale's. Um, and, and addressing this sarcasm and how nasty it is in this moment. Um, anyway, uh, the other idea, which I've also labelled one, which, um, you know, we all know how good I am with numbers, so uh, this should surprise no one. Um, <laughs> the other idea I had was taking the idea of truth, like this quote is about truth, isn't it? Um, you know, and what is truth? And whether truth should be used as a weapon um and how like how valuable truth is to certain people um taking the idea of truth 
uh, I wanted to write a monologue as John Proctor because John Proctor is all about truth, isn't he? Like he values truth more than anything, even though he knows that um, Elizabeth is going to make his life hell, he tells his wife that he's cheating on her. Um, you know, like, that's a man who really believes in truth. Um, so, taking the idea of truth, writing a monologue as John Proctor in his cell, debating about whether he should just falsely confess and save his life, or die with honour and protect others from the same fate. Okay, so, addressing that idea of truth, um, writing a monologue. Um, so, can you see here what I'm doing is I'm taking the idea, I'm not directly taking the quote. And that's okay. That's totally okay. As long as you're taking the heart of the quote and exploring that idea. Okay? Um, the one thing that I would say if you're going to kind of like write more outside of the prompt and write with the idea, make sure that the idea is like front and center. It's like in every paragraph. Okay, I wouldn't want to just kind of see it in one paragraph. I'd want to see it the whole way through. That every paragraph of this monologue that I was going to write had something about truth, that it, it tied back to the idea of truth, the importance of truth. Okay, um, the other thing that I will say is monologues, great way to do this sack is a monologue. One, because you get to write in first person. Two, because you get to show your understanding of the character. Three, because you can play a little with the type of language that the character uses. Um, so you could like incorporate some of those quotes we collected yesterday. Um, and yeah, so I, I feel like that that's a really kind of good good thing to kind of do. And also I feel like it's an easier one as well because monologue kind of fits in with the type of writing that Miller does because obviously a script um, could very easily incorporate a monologue. So yeah, so that's my idea. All right, so steps to writing. The first thing you do, choose your quote, okay? You pick the one that you recognize and you have an idea about what happens around it. Um, this will make it easier for you to come up with the creative ideas. Now remember, you're going to have 72 hours with the prompt, okay? You've got loads of time to go back to the scene, reread it, make sure you understand it, okay? All right, so the practice quote that I'm using here is Danforth, okay? So this is another one that I'm going to go through with you. So this is the one I pick. Now hear me and beguile yourself no more. I will not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Them that will not confess will hang. While I speak God's law, I will not crack its voice with whimpering. Okay, so that is the bit where um, where Paris and Hale are talking to Danforth and trying to convince him to kind of postpone the executions. Um, and the reason that they're trying to get the executions postponed, well, Paris's reason is because he knows that everybody hates him and he thinks that if Proctor and Nurse get um, executed, then like his life in in um, Salem is over. Um, so <laughs> that's why he doesn't want it. And obviously um, Hale doesn't want it because of what we spoke about before about shame. Um, but Danforth is like, no way. Um, I'm going to kill these people no matter what. Um, I will not crack its voice with, with whimpering. Like, I'm not going back on my word now. Um, so yeah, um, that's, that's his thing. All right. So step two. So I pick my quote, step one, two, I'm going to break down the ideas of the quote. Okay. So I highlight my key terms. So it's just like we do with a text response essay, guys. So hear me. Okay. I will not, I will not. Receive a single plea for pardon. Pardon means like um, that I forgive your sins. So he's not he's not going to forgive anyone's sins. And this this is very Danforth, isn't he? He's he's absolutely merciless. Um, you know he shows no mercy um, to anyone. Um, he's very black and white. Um, them that will not confess will hang. Okay, so black and white. You don't confess, you hang. You confess, not hang you. Simple as that. Uh, while I speak God's law, that's interesting because he's basically saying, I am the next step from God. There's God and then there's me. Direct line. Okay. I will not crack its voice with whimpering. 
Okay, so list the key ideas shown in it. You will be able to use these later to ensure that your concept has a strong link to the quote. So, the two things that I was like, these are the two big things that I see in this quote. Okay, and you can go back to, now we did, I think the last Tuesday, I'm going to say Tuesday, um, of, it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. So, Jonathan, if it was Wednesday and you missed out on this, um, make sure that you grab someone's book and photocopy it because it's good notes, good notes. Um, we did a big brainstorm on the board and we looked at each of the themes and we went through the didactic pur purpose of each that we were like, what is he saying about power? And what is he saying about mob mentality? And what is he saying about hysteria? Okay, those things, what, which one of those things do you see in this quote? Okay, so I said that I could see two things in this quote. I could see power and I could see fear. So I said power where he's like, hear me, because that's like, you know, like demanding. Um, and I speak God's law, talking about like that direct um, line from God. Um, and then the other thing, the fear thing, where he's like, Dan Danforth is actually doing all of this because he's scared of people challenging his own authority. Okay. So they're the two things that I came up with. So step three. Okay. So step one, choose a quote. Step two, break it down. Step three, choose the form you would like to write in. Okay, here are some of your choices. You can do any of these and they're just suggestions. If there's another idea that you've got, um, flag it with me. I don't want interpretive dance and I don't want poetry. Poetry has an asterisk. If you're somebody who actually writes poetry um, and you're good at it, may maybe, maybe. Send it to me first. Send me send me some ideas first. <laughs> little little snippet, okay? Because um, yeah, poetry is something that like it's either amazing, but mostly not. So okay. So these are the choices. These are some of my ideas of I think ones that work really well and um, are fairly fairly foolproof. So letters. Letters are a great way to do it because you can either write like one really detailed letter or you could write a letter and a response. That works really well. Uh, a monologue is another really good one um, because then you really get to kind of explore the thoughts and feelings of the character and that should be front and centre. It shouldn't be about kind of like events happening. It should be about helping me see that you understand these characters should be the prompt and the thoughts and feelings of the characters they should be at the heart of your piece okay um, a script a script is a really good way of doing it because obviously it is a script um, my advice would be to if you're thinking about a script which I think is you know a pretty foolproof way of doing this um, I would just have a very good look at how scripts are laid out and um, got one sitting on your desk so that like should be pretty easy but you can kind of look at the format and go okay so you have like a name and then you have a colon and then you have the person speaks and then sometimes you have stage directions um, and sometimes those stage directions are quite detailed especially if you're Arthur Miller who is like very very particular about what his set looks like so <laughs> um, have a look and make sure that you are kind of doing it the same way that Miller does um, a memoir is a good way to do it. Uh, a memoir is like a personal account. Um, it's kind of like a reflection piece, um, like re somebody reflecting back on their life. Okay. Um, so a memoir topic focuses on specific experiences rather than providing a broad life story. So it's not a life story. You're not writing an autobiography. Um, you're just writing about like a very small moment in past tense reflecting on it. Okay, so it could be like Elizabeth um, reflecting on um, that time that she was in jail. Um, a vignette, 
A vignette is defined as a broad, evocative description, account, or episode. Basically, it's a very, 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 very short story. Okay? So it just, like, focuses on a very small moment, a couple of hours. Okay? That's a really nice way of doing it. Um, and it means that, like, you can get real depth in your characters because, obviously, you only have to write about a couple of hours. Um, a eulogy which is like what somebody says at someone's funeral. Obviously, pff, a lot of funerals going on in Salem at that time, so you could write one. Um, a speech. So maybe, like, who would who would make a speech? Well, I wouldn't say, like, Elizabeth would make a speech. That's, that's not her style. But someone like Paris would make a speech. Um, he would actually make a sermon, you know, from the pulpit because he's a priest. Yeah. Um, an editorial, questionable, remembering that they're in, like, a very, very remote area. There would be no, like, Salem Times. Um, they're, they're too small. Um, but you could kind of, like, do it, you know, like, uh, like a statewide newspaper and, like, looking at it kind of bigger. Um, or a dialogue, which is where two people are talking, it would kind of look like script form. For my examples, I've decided I'm going to choose a memoir and a speech. Okay, they were my two ideas. So, step four. So, step one, pick the topic. Step two, pull it apart. Step three, choose my form. Step four, shape your concept. Okay, come up with your concept. So, here is my example. Now hear me and beguile yourself no more. Blah, blah. Here were my concepts. I've got two. Ha, <laughs> ha. So, my first one was a memoir as Danforth, okay? I was going to write as Danforth because he's obviously the person that's in the quote. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, explaining his choices at the time, so like why he decided to kill all these people um, and why he refused to crack and postpone the executions despite knowing that this was going to be condemned by the people of Salem. Now, I think that's a really good idea paying myself on the back there. Um, I think it's a really good idea because someone like Dan Forth would have written memoirs. One, because he thinks he's really important um, and interesting. Debatable. But, like, I would say most people who write memoirs feel that way about themselves and nobody else does. Uh, <laughs> and um, the other reason I think it's a really good idea is because, again, it gets at the, the thoughts and feelings and motivations of a character. And that's what you need to show me, okay? And also, it's very much addressing the prompt, isn't it? Um, remembering that the two things that you really need to explore, one, the prompt, two, the thoughts and feelings of characters. Uh, the other idea I had, because, you know, God forbid I have two, uh, God forbid I have just one, um, a speech delivered by Paris at the pulpit. Okay, which is like the podium where the church is, um, on the Sunday after the execution. So after all these executions have happened, what does he say to the congregation? Because like most of them will think he's he's a rat. So what does he say to them to try and like convince them to stick by him? Because that'd be a hard sell. Um, he'd try and justify Danforth's actions. And he'd try and clear his own name because, you know, he's a rat and he'd want to, like, wriggle out of, like, any sort of taking any kind of, like, responsibility. Um, and he'd want to reassert his power now that Proctor has gone and really thrown um, thrown some some questions on his, his authority and his power. Okay? And that would then address these two ideas of power and fear. Okay, so I'm using the ideas in the quote and not the quote itself. All right, so step five. Step one, pick the prompt. Step two, <laughs> step two, pull the prompt apart. Step three, pull, 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 pull the prompt apart. Step three, how have I forgotten step three? Oh, yeah, step three, choose the form. Step four, um, come up with your concept. Step five, plan my piece. Okay, so I think a lot of people feel like they don't need to plan creative content. That is incorrect. If JK sat down and planned out the past, present and future of 
all of her characters, every single one, like Luna, like Fred and George, like or like even like minor minor characters like Luna's dad like planned out all of their futures even though she wasn't going to write them if she needed to do all that you probably need to plan this little thing because like she's probably a better writer than you I mean like you know she has sold a few books she kind of knows what she's doing anyway um, so, plan out each paragraph, especially how each paragraph relates to the quote and the ideas in it. So, how is it relevant? Okay, so the concept that I decided to pick was my memoir is Dan Danforth. Um, my first paragraph, I'm going to talk about needing, um, needing to get his side of the story told so that he no longer feels judgment. Um, and that obviously connects with this idea of fear about people challenging his authority. Okay, my second paragraph, telling people what happened after the execution. Paris is driven out of town, people attacked his character because of the executions, being forced to step down from his position. Aha, uh -huh. so his fear was, was, comes to, comes to light, yeah? So can you see how like I'm making sure every paragraph connects directly back to the ideas in the quote? Every paragraph should connect. Uh, paragraph three, he explains that he felt that by postponing the executions, it would have caused people to question the courts um, and it would have been seen as a way for people to question his authority. Again, tying back. Um, paragraph four, I was going to explain how uh, what he feels would have happened if his authority was challenged and speaks about how he would never let it happen again. Um, and then lastly, oh, sorry, second lastly, um, dis discuss the idea of guilt and confession, okay, uh, that Proctor and Nurse were guilty of defying the court, if not guilty of witchcraft, and in his belief, they deserve to hang regardless. And that obviously connects back to this idea of power. Now, he feels like, I speak for God, like I, my word is law, okay, so like this like power fueled human. Um, and then lastly, um, talk about being unremorseful, which again kind of ties back to that idea of power. Okay, so see how I've planned out every paragraph? Word to the wise, if you're going to talk about something new, you start a new paragraph. Okay, that may mean that you have 20 paragraphs because you're going to talk about lots of different things. That's totally fine. Creative writing has lots of paragraphs. Here, I've got six paragraphs. I would normally not write an essay with six paragraphs, but this isn't an essay. This is a creative piece. New idea, new like event, new paragraph. Okay, only psychopaths don't have paragraphs. You better have paragraphs. All right, now. Once you've planned everything out, you write. 